what you're looking at here is a 1972 Zenith black and white four tube hybrid TV chassis. I'm about to dishwasher it because the whole board, the, everything inside is covered in grease. And I mean, my hands are a mess right now from it. It's hard to tell, but I mean, look at the flyback or anything like this uh, PVC tube right here. It is just grease covered. So, perfect opportunity to do this. There we go, entering its first cycle. Here's the picture too, if I got the label covered up. It is just covered in grease, it's disgusting. But that said, the TV did still work, but it's intermittent on the high voltage and I found the problem because I never had this TV apart before. Uh, there's a re uh, power resistor underneath that was never soldered in place. It was just looped around and never soldered. And uh, it was completely disconnected when I found it, probably from sh in movement shipping. So we'll be fixing that. Hello. What's up? Car car. Hi. Hi. I'm anxious to just see what the water's going to look like once it's done doing this first cycle here. It goes to drain. And like I said, the most important thing about doing something like this is dry drying time. It's going to be several days before I even touch this again. Any hidden water or moisture. But the results are perfect when they're done. That's what I'm about. Ew. Look at that. That is nasty. The cycle just ended. I just opened it up. Leave it air dry for a bit before I remove it and put it in front of a fan for a while. But it looks like I got all the grease off of everything. That was nasty. So yeah, like I said, right now the important thing now is dry time. Let's go, I got all that grease off of there. Even off the yolk. The yolk was pretty bad, now it's all shiny again. So. And here's what the top looks like. The yolk is all shiny and clean. Flyback, all clean as well. So, I have this little Eastern Electric fan, which was a little good amount of air blowing right on it, and just leave it like this for several days. It'll completely dry out now. We got all that grease off of this thing. Now, we have a picture tube, and even the cabinet, which I have pieces of right here. Here's the second wave of cleaning. Got the original rabbit ears, power cord, and the pieces for the rabbit ears and the bracket on the dishwasher. I have a method of covering up the labels so they don't get damaged. And I mean, it, I can get every nook and cranny by putting in the dishwasher, so my picture tube is clean. All the hardware is up here ran through the ultrasonic cleaner, as well as the um, dials and everything. Get all the grime off of it. And the final step, the cabinet. So much easier to get all that dirt out of those vent holes like this. Yeah, it's been about two days for that. Fan blowing on it. Just to be safe. Uh, it's probably dry now. Um, I started to do cosmetic work with CRT. When I received this back in 04, I had some shipping damage. And unfortunately, that's right where the CRT bracket mount is. So, I still have the piece to it, and luckily this is all in one piece, so I'm going to be using some JB Weld on it and pushing it together. So, we'll see how all that works. Uh, we're almost back together right here with this thing. But I had a problem with it since I've had it when I received it in back in 04. It was intermittent high voltage. 
and I thought it was just a dirty or loose tube socket or bad you know, connection somewhere. Found it now that I finally had this thing apart. Someone did a repair on this thing at some point and did a very hack, very, very shitty job. This resistor here, see it's a 3 watt, oh, 33 ohm. I might have something better with better leads on it to replace it with, but you see it's not even soldered. You see, they just cut the leads and hooked it on. See, this one has a copper lead coming off that's hooked onto that. They use the used resistor. That is very shitty work right there. That's not how you do it. I'm going to do it right. Fortunately, I didn't have any resistors in stock, so I just hooked this existing one and properly soldered it in place. So we'll see how that it, how that works right there. One thing you may also notice: this is um, still almost a point-to-point -point wired set with only about two uh, circuit boards in it. This one here, and this one here in the tuner. But the uh, rest of it, it's all point-to-point. And it's a four tube set. Okay. pattern generator on it. Got perfect uh, squares out of cross hatch and then linearity is good so it's not there's only uh, uh, let me see but one other than user controls all you have is your horizontal hold and your intermediate frequency um, vertical linearity vertical height and then you have uh, RF AGC on the circuit board there. And that's it, really. And there's the horizontal output tube. That's the only replaced tube in this set. Because the rest are all original 1972 um, Zenith. That replacement tube is a RCA. <laughs> I, that's how it was when I got it. And horizontal oscillator tube. Also to note, about this thing. Every transistor in this set is also socketed. Those transistors there I could easily just pull out. You see how they're, they're that one there is sitting in there? So these have socketed transistors too. It was meant to be serviced this TV. Um, it looks like it's only been repaired once in its life and whoever did it did a poor job but I fixed that. But that said, after our cleanup, everything was a success. Nice clean signal. And chassis is up and operating. Um, let's give a quick rundown of what we have. All the tubes are original except the horizontal output tube. It's been replaced. Um, and uh, it's been replaced with an RCA part instead. But it's equivalent. It's a 38HE7 and it tests good on my tube tester. That tube right there is the horizontal oscillator, uh, 6L and 8. This right here is the vertical output tube. It is a 17JZ8. And the audio output is a 12FX5. I just got done doing some troubleshooting. I had, um, I had good audio when you had a blank signal, white noise very strong and clear. Whenever you had a signal on it, it was weak and very distorted. 
And um, it turns out you adjust this top um, inductor coil right here for maximum sound. And then you can adjust this uh, inductor down here for minimal distortion. I had to tweak them just a little bit, but now it's blasting. We don't want to make you understand. From a tape I have in there, it's very loud now. This board here is for all your um, video processing, um, as well as this part of the tuner right here. So, looks like um, everything's original except that horizontal output tube and that one resistor that was replaced on the bottom rather half-assed. Uh, yoke is in place, which aligned the way it should. These two. Um, Magnet rings right here adjust for horizontal centering. I'm getting to the point where it's ready to be put back together. Everything tests out. Everything's adjusted. Everything looks good. It works properly. Um, and I had to do some repairs on this cabinet, even still. Which brings up another point. It does have built in antennas. But unfortunately, I can't use them because when I got this, either they broke off or someone else was in here and messed with it. These uh, thin pieces here, the tabs are broken off and it's on a spring. Because what it's supposed to do, it's supposed to hold this, this uh, piece, this sleeve up against that ball there and provide friction so you can extend the antennas and they'd stay where you put them. It ain't gonna work. It's gonna extend the antenna, it's just gonna flop around because it's broken. So, um, I originally got the TV because it was already broken. I just took the antennas out and there are just the two holes here. I'm afraid I'm gonna have to leave it like that unless I find another set of antennas for it to complete it because otherwise, yeah, I got, I, it ain't gonna work. Um, it won't even sit in the cabinet to make contact with the connection to make it, you know, to the, the um, antenna leads, you know. So it won't even work electrically, let alone mechanically. So, I mean, this TV's had a bit of a rough life, I guess. It's been dropped or something, either damaged in shipping. But it ain't that bad. I've done a bunch of gluing and repair on this as well as cleaned up the inside which is just covered in grease and other nasties so it's just turned out pretty well as you can see everything's nice and shiny and clean again so now begins the reassembly and I got the TV all back together now and all shined up with Novus Nice and that wood finish came out really shiny. Unfortunately, the top was really scratched up, but it's pretty clean now, as you can see. Best I can get it. It smells like vacuum tubes in here. Freakazoid. Oh yeah, that was one of those weird ass edits I made a long time ago <laughs> from one episode. Now the whole reason, one of the reasons I grabbed this TV from storage to work on at this point in time, we were at the thrift store and I found two of these period correct television carts. This one will fit this TV and I have another one I have to finish cleaning up. Uh, it's for a 19-inch TV. Uh, black and white, you know, shallow cabinet, of course. But, um, yeah, the wood parts actual, are actual wood. I just use pledge on them. The metal pieces, it's supposed to be chrome. It ain't going to return like that. It had a lot of rust and corrosion on it. I just washed it, uh, used some steel wool all over it, and then buffed it one more time wheels are original and I just put a drop of oil on each to keep them easily turning I always wanted one of these television carts 
and you see the back has a little handle. But you see the TV, it's designed for this, this particular style of television. Now, I just also walking around it trying to show you um, the entire cabinet and how cleaned up it is. Yeah, it is SANS built-in VHF. This is the original UHF loop antenna. I currently got it hooked up to my one DVD VHS combo unit. Um, but, before I go on, TV's all set up, it's adjusted, and it's ready to go. Um, one thing I'm going to note, um, I just got off eBay a blonde tongue agile um, modulator. And the best thing, the nice about that is I can, I think I was reading somewhere real quick, I asked stuff to look up all the specs on it. I can pretty much output over the air anywhere from channels 2 through channel 27 UHF. And um, just hook a pair of rabbit ears or an antenna, a tuned antenna, whatever, whatever frequency you're going for, even a piece of wire to the output terminal because it outputs anywhere from 50 to 60 dB um, millivolt and I'm going to test it to make sure it doesn't travel too far I have uh, inline attenuators I can use if it does but my goal is I want to start actually using these old sets wirelessly as they were intended that way there I don't have to have cables and everything running all over the place because <laughs> This back wall is wired like that. We got office space going on. We're just exercising the these TVs here. But um, yeah, so what I'm gonna do? I'll turn up the volume to about here. Turn it halfway. Why not? And um, let me get it set up and power on. See the tubes are starting to glow. And that the chassis is completely clean. It actually just smells like just pure vacuum tubes. Yeah, so you see those lines, how they're fading in and out the top of the screen? It's not nothing wrong with the television, but these older TVs, uh, what you're seeing there is the effects of macrovision encoded discs. I'd have to run it through a time-based corrector or some other color corrector to eliminate that, which I actually have on these sets over here. It does work nicely, but that's why that's occurring. So for the time being, ignore that, but observe how very sharp the picture is. It looks very, very good. And um, here we go. I don't hear nothing. Wait for it. Tinkerbell? This is Brigadier 
General Hammond, Chief Medical Officer of the Soul Center. Oh, hi. <laughs> Which one here's McIntyre? You. You and Pierce are both under arrest. I'd like to get a second opinion on that. <laughs> With the charge, General. Breaking orders by having this party. And handing out unauthorized passes. <laughs> the mummy strikes. Major Burns, sir. Hamilton. Hot lips. Hot lips. <laughs> Attention, attention. The following personnel are assigned to the 4077 Mobile Army Surgical Hospital. Alan Alda. Wayne Rogers. McLean Stevenson. Loretta Swift. G. Wood. Larry Linville. Gary Berghoff. Karen Phillip. George Morgan. Patrick Adiarty, Timothy Brown, Odessa Cleveland. the original one on. That would have been cooler. Yeah. And here's an example of a non-macro macrovision encoded disc. This is actually the first DVD I ever bought back in August of 2001. And the first DVD player is still up there and still works fine. Made in Japan Sony. But uh, I'd still like to show you because like you said there's no problem with that what we just witnessed. So Sharpness on this TV is phenomenal, as you'd expect from a Zenith. But yeah, this TV is a very, very good performer. And probably back in the day, this TV was probably in someone's bedroom back in 1972. But it's nice I got a pretty nice matching period correct cart for it now. Even the, the wood grain matches the TV's wood grain. Not if we got them first. He means war. We see how number there are many of them. Hear me. The Thorn Valley plan is the aspiration of idiots and dreamers. We <laughs> we were just talking about you. That's refreshing, Jenner. Usually you're screaming about us. <laughs> Who is that? You know the rules. There are no visitors allowed here. May I present Mrs. Jonathan Brisby? Jonathan Frisbee is dead. She's not one of us. What's the meaning of this? Send her away. Let's get back to business. Wait, wait. No. He has been to see the truth. Owl. He has told her that... But, there you go. Hope you enjoyed the 1972 Zenith 16-inch black and white four-tube hybrid TV. It is the, the 16... DB12X chassis.